Hey folks, I'm Alex Debris, and today we're gonna to talk about using DynamoDB in your GraphQL APIs. Specifically, this video is gonna focus on using multiple DynamoDB tables in your API. I think there's a debate on, hey, should I use single table? Should I use multi-table with my GraphQL APIs? The key trade-off here is, is do you wanna have less complexity in your resolvers, or do you wanna have a little more performance on your actual queries? So in this one, we'll be looking at using multiple DynamoDB tables. I'm gonna be using AppSync. I'm gonna be doing a lot in the AWS console, but we also have an accompanying repo for this. So if you wanna see how this looks using infrastructure as code, go ahead and check out that repo. Let's start off with the intro of the application we're gonna build here. Imagine we're building a SaaS application that allows users to come in, create their own blog, right? So a user will sign up, they'll create their site, associate a domain with that site if they wanna start their blog. Now, as they start writing, they'll write posts on their blog. So we have a one-to-many relationship between that site they've created and the blog posts they've written for their site. And then other readers can come, they can view those posts, but they can also comment on those posts. So posts will have a one-to-many relationship with comments in this application. So we have three entities here, sites, posts, and comments. Again, since we're doing that multi-table design with DynamoDB, each one of those entities is gonna get their own DynamoDB table. So next we're gonna go into the AWS console and set up the DynamoDB tables for each of these entities. So to create this table, go to the DynamoDB section of the AWS console and click that create table button. That'll drop us into that table creation wizard. And remember, we're creating one table for each um, entity in our application. So we can start off with our sites table. We can give it a primary key that's unique to that actual entity. So give it domain for the partition key there. We'll, we'll keep most of the settings the same. We do want to customize and change it to on-demand billing mode, just a little more serverless friendly for us there. And then you can scroll down to the bottom and hit create table. So you can see that that's created the sites table. We also want to create tables for our two other entities, posts and comments. We'll zoom through that here as well. Create the post table, set that to on-demand and create that comments table as well. Again, each of those are going to have primary keys that are unique to those entities, specific to those entities. So we're not using that PKSK pattern you might see in single table design. So after we've got our three tables ready and active, we can move on to the next step. All right, the next step we're gonna do here is set up our GraphQL API. And to do that, you need to go to the App Sync section of the AWS console. Once you're there, click that Create API button to set up your API. There are a few different wizards and guides to get going here, but we have our own GraphQL API, so we're actually just gonna build it from scratch and hit that Start button. First thing you need to do is give your API a name, so I'll just give it Multi-Table Blog here to indicate we're using multiple tables. Once I'm in there, I wanna edit my GraphQL schema because I've already defined my schema in this application, right? So I can delete what's in there and, and paste my existing schema. Let's just take a quick look at that. You know, We've got our schema root, which has both those query and mutation fields on it. You can see those in there. If you look at our query type, we have two main queries we're gonna use there, get site and get post for site, right? So someone can go check out a site, get the post for a site. We also have that mutation type that's gonna allow us to do things like create a site, create a post, create a comment. If you look further down in our schema, we have our different types defined, sites, posts, comments, connections, all that stuff. So once you're good with that, go ahead and hit that save schema. And the next thing we're gonna do is set up our data sources. So go over here on the left-hand side and click that data sources button. Now, what data sources are is just a way to register DynamoDB tables or, or open search domains with GraphQL so that you can use them in your AppSync domain. So we'll create our first one here, give it a name of sites table. We're just gonna register that first table for us here. It's a, a of type table choose the region it's in and actually choose the table that we just created. So we created all those tables. Now we're just uh, registering them with uh, our AppSync domain here. So I'll do the same thing with posts and comments really quickly here to make sure that we have all our data sources registered. So we didn't just create them in DynamoDB, we also registered them in AppSync. With these data sources hooked up, let's go actually configure some resolvers. So to do that, let's go back to our schema view that we had before. And if you look on the right-hand side there, there's this resolver section where we can attach different resolvers to elements in our schema. Let's do one now. I'm gonna scroll down to the query root and find that get site field and click that attach button to attach a resolver. Now to configure a resolver, I need to choose a data source and I'm gonna go directly to one of those DynamoDB tables we configured. If you're going directly to a DynamoDB table, you need to set up what's called request mapping and response mapping templates. So you're gonna pass in some VTL here. You can see this is a pretty straightforward template, which is nice. You know, we're doing a get item operation. We're passing in an argument. This is the benefit of using that multi-table approach. We have pretty simple resolvers where we don't have to be thinking about a lot and, and doing a lot in our VTL. 
Now, if you don't like VTL, you don't have to use it. You can use Lambda functions instead of going directly to your DynamoDB tables if you like. Then you can write it in Node, Python, Java, whatever your language of choice is. So once you've configured that first resolver, go ahead and hit save. I wanna do one more resolver here. So let's head back to your schema. You know, we, we started with our query root, that's great. But if you go look at that site type, you know, it has those site properties, but it also has this post property, right? A, a, a to many relationship, we have that post connection here. Let's show how to, how to resolve a field off of one of our different types. So go find that site type and find that post thing. And let's attach a resolver here. We're gonna use that post table. And now we'll paste in the request mapping template here. Again, this is a pretty straightforward template. We're doing a query operation against DynamoDB. We're looking for all the posts with a particular site ID. And notice that when we're pasting in that site ID, we're using the context.source object that's passed into that query there. What that's saying is, hey, we know this is a, a second or, or later step in a GraphQL query. There's already a parent item that's being fetched. And based on that item we retrieved, we can pass in you know, that site ID in order to, to fetch the post for this. We'll also paste in our response mapping template. Again, pretty straightforward here. We'll pass in the cursor. We'll pass in the items we get back. Once you're done, go ahead and hit that Save Resolver button to save this resolver. And then let's go ahead and navigate back to that schema view. One last thing we wanna do before we start running queries is to enable X-Ray. So go ahead and go into the settings and scroll down and click enable X-Ray, hit save. What X-Ray is gonna do is give you distributed tracing. So when you make a request to your GraphQL API, it'll show you all the different resolvers it went through, how long that took, just give us real nice visibility into our API. So we have everything configured. Let's go actually run some queries against our API. To do so, go to the query section on the side of that API. API uh, sidebar there. And what it's gonna give you is a little playground for you to actually write some queries in, run those and execute them. So first thing I wanna do here is create our first site, right? So I'll do a create site mutation, giving it an input, I'm creating the AWS Amazon blog, uh, create that. And you can see I got my data back. I got an ID, I got a domain, everything I, I want there. Now that I've done that, let's go ahead and let's actually create a post, right? So uh, I'm creating a post, I, I put in my site ID, I have my title, my content for my blog post, and that was able to create as well. And, you know, one post is nice, but maybe I wanna have a little bit of consistency here, so I wanna have a second post here as well. I'll paste that in, hey, a second post, I know uh, I'll create that one. So now we have a user that's created a site, they've created two posts. Let's go ahead and fetch all that using the power of GraphQL to fetch that, that related data in a single query here. So we'll get away from our mutations. We'll actually do a query. We'll do a get site query where we're fetching that site itself, but we're also fetching that nested data, that post data in uh, reverse chronological order so that we can show our latest post to people that wanna do it. I do that query there. And when I get that, you can see I've, I've got all my data back that I requested in a single request. I got that, I've got that site data indicating the information about that, but I've also got my posts. What are the IDs? What are the titles for those particular posts there? And, and, I, and I can see that. Last thing I wanna do is just look at the flow of data here, what happened, and that's where we enabled Amazon X-Ray earlier. I wanna show that. So let's go to settings. If you go back to that X-Ray settings, you can click view traces in X-Ray and it'll take you right to your, um, your service here. What I wanna do, you can see a lot of different traces listed. I wanna just find the most recent one because that was the last query I ran. So you can go that one that happened 27 seconds ago. I'll click on that. And what it's showing me is the whole flow of that different request. So it hits my API. It's running that first resolver, which reaches out to DynamoDB. You can see that first DynamoDB request there to get the item from the sites table. But then there's that second DynamoDB request, that query against the post table. So I have two different requests going to Dynamo and notice that they're sequential because I have to get the site first. Once that's resolved, then I can go get the other one. This result in X-Ray really shows the main takeaway we wanna have here. If you're using that multiple table approach in your GraphQL API, you're gonna have simpler, less complex resolvers. However, when a client comes with a query that has a lot of nested data, the performance might be a little slower as you have to sequentially work through each of those different resolvers. If you go check out our single table video, you can see this exact same design, but using that single table. There's more complexity in the resolvers, but the performance is a little faster for those well-known optimized queries. Thanks for watching this, hope you enjoyed it.